today I'm going to use this BBC Micro and a VHF radio not dissimilar to this to create the world's latest tactical digital radio network. So this is a network that we can use in the case of a state emergency when everything else fails uh, or a war or something and it'll help for us guidance and information to get us out of a sticky situation. Uh, and it's in colour. Combining these technologies from the 1980s could be the marriage of the century. Um, although to be fair I'm probably overstating this a little bit. Um, either way if you want to see the birth of the latest tactical digital radio network um, and you want to see how you can go online with an old BBC micro and something akin to a taxi radio then stay tuned. In previous videos I've shown you how you can connect a 1980s computer to bulletin board services and view data systems using a modem and a telephone. Now in the uh, 1980s prior to the web being invented this was the primary way to get your online fix. Well if you were a radio amateur back in the 1980s you probably would have used packet radio to get your online fix so I thought I'd create a video about it. But this got me thinking. I mean imagine there's no landline or your mobile signal's rubbish, or there's no internet nearby. Um, it'd be a bit like living around here, to be honest. Um, but imagine that it was in, we were in the middle of a state emergency and all our other networks were either down or busy. What we'd need is a new kind of network altogether, a network that could provide information and guidance during a disaster or state emergency, a network that was in colour. Now we've already seen how you can connect a home computer to bulletin board systems and view data systems using a telephone and a modem. Radio amateurs at the time came up with a different and cheaper way of accessing the bulletin board. Instead of using a telephone and a modem, they would use a VHF radio and a TNC, a terminal node controller. Sharing the name from the technology it used, it was called packet radio. The terminal node controller was like a modem, but was actually quite a bit smarter. In fact, it did a whole bundle of stuff, including uh, techniques to reduce interference. This was especially important in my case because my next door neighbour was constantly fixing his car with an old arc welder. Anyway, I digress. The part that was missing from the packet radio setup was the telephone exchanges, the thing that would route you from where you were now to a distant bullet board many, many miles away. Packet radio enthusiasts dealt with this in a couple of different ways. Um, now firstly, these, these devices, these TNCs, these terminal load controllers, could be configured to relay any signals that they received. So as long as I could get to my neighbouring packet radio enthusiast, I could then relay through him to somewhere more distant, um, in somewhere that I wouldn't normally be able to get to. Um, and of course I could then relay through that person to get to a, a further and so on. Um, the second, more robust approach was to configure a network of nodes. Um, so you would connect to your local node and then you'd be able to have a look and see which nodes could be heard from that node and connect to other ones and so on and work your way through the network that way. It was subtly different, it was a little bit more robust um, in terms of error correction and so on. And it was very analogous I suppose to the telephone exchange in that you connect to your local exchange and then go to a, a different, different, you know, take a route through the network to get to your final destination. So why am I talking about nodes? Well, because nodes was where the bulletin boards were hosted. So everybody that had a node typically had a bulletin board system as well. Packet radio as it was back then is quite scarce now. Um, although there is a growing interest in uh, Berkshire and Hampshire, I notice, and probably other places too. Um, as a result of this renewed interest, we have a node quite close to us. In fact, it's over there in the corner of the office. To connect to our local node with our BBC Micro, we would need a radio and a TNC. Um, now, back in the 80s, I couldn't afford a radio like this, um, so I converted an old VHF taxi radio. It was a fairly common thing to do back then, and most old radio sets could be made into something quite useful. This BBC Micro is running Comstar. Uh, we have the TNC connected to the RS232 port, which is in turn connected to the radio. Okay, so let's connect to our local node. So we've got the command prompt from our TNC and we're going to enter a command now which will call, tell that TNC to contact the radio to make a call to our local radio node. Okay, so we're now connected to our local radio node. 
which isn't very far to be honest, it's just in the corner of the office there. Um, but we have a command on here called notes, so we can type that in and that'll tell me what nodes our local node can hear. Now, one of these nodes we'll connect to, which will be a long way away, and it'll have a bulletin board system on it, and we'll access that bulletin board system. Okay, so let's connect to a remote node. Okay, so we're connecting to a bulletin board uh, service for the first time and it's asking me to enter my name and I would log on and check messages just like a bulletin board system that you might have used with your telephone and your modem. Of course, this is excruciatingly slow. Now, bear in mind though, back in the 80s, this was only fairly slow, which for most of us was pretty normal really. Now, I know this is not very exciting, but imagine what this was like in the middle of the 1980s, where there was no internet, no cell phones, and many people didn't even have a telephone. To get the full experience, you have to kind of imagine you're exploring the ether alone in a darkened room uh, with radios and cables all over the place. Um, in the background, there might be a fading sound of a pirate radio station or maybe some faint Morse code. There was something magical about it. OK, so now that we know what packet radio is, let's turn our attention to the world's latest tactical view data network, Packet Telstar. OK, so here we are back on our local node, except this time I've switched Comstar into Presto mode. Um, now you may have already noticed we have our commands here. We have a command called Telstar. Now there's the nodes command we use and this is an example of other commands that we can use. Let's have a look at the Telstar command. Okay, it's quite slow, but it works. Um, let's have a look at the news. Remember, this speed wasn't far off normal back in the 1980s. OK, well, given that it's 2022 and not 1984, it's time to go up market. So what I've got here is a, a Linux laptop um, with the ViewData client loaded, a modern ViewData client connected to my Kenwood walkie talkie, which has got a TNC built in. So I've just simply connected it with a USB lead. Um, now, for this demonstration, you have to kind of imagine that I'm in the middle of nowhere. There's a war on and I need some information about what's going on. OK, so let's say this new network is up and running um, and you happen to be stuck in the middle of nowhere, um, but you find refuge in an old log cabin. Um, well, you've got no internet, you've got no mobile. So what we've got is our new Telstar Packet Tactical Radio Network. Um, obviously, it helps if you're in an old taxi or you happen to have the radio, uh, which is quite convenient. Um, we've got a laptop. Um, so let's try and connect uh, and see how we get on. Okay, we've connected to the packet radio node, so that's good news. Okay, um, and let's see if we can get some tactical information. Something that's going to uh, allow us to uh, move to somewhere more safe. More safe? Of course, if we've got a bit of spare time, we could always book a holiday.
Okay, so you get the idea. Um, it's been a bit of a silly exercise, let's be honest, but there's something in this. V data is a low bandwidth kind of a medium. Um, and obviously radio, packet radio, and even the telephone network is, is, is low bandwidth. And maybe there's still some space for it in the modern day. Um, I want to have a play around with it over the next few weeks, see if I can get it a bit more uh, efficient, get it faster, and maybe make it a bit more useful. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to book a quick holiday and I'll see you soon. Well, I hope you agree that it's been, as usual, a fairly pointless exercise, but nevertheless, it may help somebody somewhere, sometime, maybe, maybe not. Um, either way, don't forget to encourage me with a like or comment or subscribe if you feel you can. Okay, well, don't forget that if any of this packet radio stuff is new to you, then I've left links in the description to people who can explain it far better than I can. Uh, and for those of you in the know, I've also included the one-line config that will allow Telstar to be made available to Lin BBQ and BBQ32 packet radio nodes. In the meantime, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.